Hello folks and welcome to a lecture on cellular respiration. This is part one of a three-part lecture series on cellular respiration. Cells require energy to perform many tasks, generally growth, movement, and reproduction. Growth and reproduction involve assembling large polymers. Movement requires active transport. The energy stored in organic molecules of food ultimately comes from the sun. Energy flows into the system as sunlight and ultimately leaves in the form of heat energy. In between the light and the heat, the energy is used to do the work of the cell, like converting inorganic compounds into organic polymers such as carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. You may know that autotrophs, plants, algae, and some bacteria, capture light energy in photosynthesis and power this process. Photosynthesis takes place in the chloroplasts of plants and algae. We'll focus on photosynthesis later. Another process has evolved where those organic polymers can be used as a fuel to power respiration in the mitochondria of all eukaryotic organisms. Prokaryotes do respiration as well, but they don't have the mitochondria organelle to do this. They use the materials in their own membranes to perform the task. The goal of respiration is to transfer the free energy of the organic compounds into a simpler molecule of ATP. The energy for the cell's work is delivered by the ATP molecule. So for respiration, we need chemical energy or food. Photosynthesis provided the food. You may be familiar with the simple formula that helps to describe the process of photosynthesis. This is way oversimplified, but we use it as a starting point. You see here that all is needed are inorganic carbon dioxide and water. They get converted into the building blocks for organic compounds. To keep it simple, we show that glucose is the food or the chemical energy. Oxygen gas is also a product of photosynthesis. Respiration is op oversimplified in the reverse reaction as well. But respiration isn't that simple either. Neither is it just the opposite process. Whereas the first chemical formula shows the building of a glucose molecule in an obvious endergonic reaction, respiration is written this way to illustrate the release of energy of glucose, an exergonic reaction, to power the endergonic process of making ATP. In words, oxygen and glucose react to produce carbon dioxide, water, and free energy. This is a multi-step process known as a metabolic pathway that requires several enzymes along the way. I'll leave the enzymes out to simplify the explanation. Respiration takes two forms. One form is fermentation, a partial breakdown of food molecules. The process does not use oxygen. Another name for the fermentation is anaerobic respiration. The term anaerobe means without air, or more particularly, without oxygen. This lecture is going to focus on aerobic, which uses oxygen to break down food and release its energy. Aerobic respiration is a complex metabolic pathway. Remember, a metabolic pathway is a series of reactions in which the product of one reaction is the reactant in the next. A series of reactions are all spontaneous and therefore exergonic. The process of aerobic respiration has been broken down into three distinct processes called glycolysis, the citric acid cycle, sometimes known as the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. In any chemical reaction, metabolic or not, the transfer of electrons during the reaction releases energy stored in organic molecules. This released energy is ultimately used to synthesize ATP. We have a name for the reactions when electrons are transferred between reactants. It's called an oxidation reduction reaction, or redox for short. In oxidation, a reactant loses electrons or is said to be oxidized. In reduction, a substance gains electrons or is said to be reduced. Here it is simplified. When sodium chloride is dissociated in water, the water's left out here, the ionic bonds between sodium and chlorine break 
and sodium loses its electron to chlorine. So sodium is oxidized while chlorine is reduced. And we can generalize it here using variables to represent the reactants in the products. In cellular respiration, glucose and other molecules are broken down in a series of steps. Glucose is oxidized and oxygen is ultimately reduced. But cellular respiration is, a much, is much more complicated than this formula suggests. Here's how it works. Let's start off with glycolysis. It gets its name from the breakdown of glucose, but many other forms of organic molecules, such as lipids or amino acids, will do. Here's our model of the glucose molecule, the food molecule. The blue spheres represent the six carbon atoms in glucose. The model helps to understand that the molecule gets broken down over time. I've left out the hydrogen and the oxygens, as well as the enzymes that are also involved in the process. The oxidation of glucose is a spontaneous reaction, but it still needs activation energy to start it. With the help of an enzyme, only two ATP are necessary to activate the glycolysis reaction. That ATP is reduced to ADP and the two high energy phosphates become part of the new products. Next, a compound called nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, NAD for short, and two more phosphates are added with the help of another enzyme. The NAD takes electrons and hydrogens off of the reactants at this stage. The NAD is now reduced because it picked up electrons. We'll need those electrons later they have energy that the cell will need. The products now carry two phosphates each. We could say that they're doubly phosphorylated. Continuing through glycolysis, there's enough energy to phosphorylate four ADP molecules into four higher energy ATP molecules. The end product of glycolysis is two pyruvate molecules. Because the reaction produced 4 ATP and it took 2 ATP to activate, it netted 2 ATP overall. That's the end of glycolysis. Now there's still energy left in the pyruvate, so cellular respiration isn't done. The cell can get more energy from them if it has oxygen available. Now respiration isn't done there. We still have two more steps to go for aerobic respiration to continue, and I'll cover that in part two of cellular respiration, where the citric acid cycle and the electron transport chain take over. But that's enough for now. I hope you took some good notes, and if you have any questions, write them down and bring them to class so we can talk about them. Until then, be well. Who doesn't know what I'm talking about? Who's never left home? Who's never struck out to find a dream?